Hello and welcome to the final video in my Regency series. Today we are working on the actual outer dress, the part that everyone will see. To make this dress, because as I think I said previously, Regency is not my cup of tea, I don't know much about it, I've never done it, but if there's an event where it is Regency inspired, I will go and I will dress up, so hence why we're making this dress. Um, but yes, because I have not much experience in making it, I'm kind of conglomerated a few different things to work out my pattern. So let me show you what we're working with. So my pattern for this is an amalgamation of things. I've taken the little vest pattern from Simplicity 5359 and I have sort of modified it into more of a Regency shape. So that's what we have here. And then I have a puff sleeve pattern that I drafted ages ago. So that might be too big, but we'll work with that. And then I'm going to use the skirt pattern from this Patterns of Fashion number one. And it's going to be this kind of skirt, but fastening at the side rather than the back. So hopefully I can make all these things meld well and turn into something that looks like a Regency dress, even if it's not particularly historically correct. This is my fabric, so let's get to cutting this out and putting it together. I've got all my bodice pieces cut out. I haven't done the skirt, but I will come back to that when I get to it. Those are basically just big rectangles that need to be gathered down to fit the bodice. So I've got the fashion fabric with the flowers and I have also just cut out a lining layer, which is just from scraps of the petticoat fabric, just to give the bodice a bit more structure and non-sheerness, opaqueness, that's the word I'm looking for because it is a broderie on glace, it's a little bit sheer. Not that there's anything to see because I've also got a chemise, a corset and a petticoat, but I think a bit of structure won't go amiss in the bodice. So now let's start putting this together. I decided I wanted to flatline my bodice pieces. I just figure that any further adjustments I need to make to the bodice and the fit, it'll be a lot easier to do it if the lining and outer are one piece. But I am going to cheat and do it by machine because these are relatively small pieces. I've just pinned them a lot and I'll just whiz them through the machine now and then we can start construction. around and overlocked all the edges of my bodice for pretty much the same reason as I flatlined it. I think it'll be a lot easier to alter in the future if I need to if all my edges are finished that way rather than trying to hand finish them in a nice manner. This is quick and easily undone. If you can't tell I really don't trust myself with making Regency outfits. I think now is time to finish the neckline and the back. I'll just fold them over and stitch them down because I overlocked them so they don't need anything fancy and then I can see if these sleeves will fit in.
this is actually starting to look a bit cute. I love a puff sleeve, so I'm all about that part of Regency fashion. <laughs> So the bodice is essentially done now. It does need to be gathered in the bottom section, which will pull everything in a bit. And I do need to figure out this side closure business, but I think I'll do that when I have the skirt. I did, of course, do up a little bit here so that I could put the sleeve in, but the rest of it will stay open so that I can get into it. Now I think I need to move on to this skirt and figuring out how that's going to attach to this. But that will be a tomorrow job because it's just gone five. I need to go walk Flynn and come back to Regency era tomorrow. Welcome to day two of Regency dressmaking. I'm really hoping I can finish it off today. Um, so we just need to do the skirt basically, which is a lot of rectangles. So let's look at this pattern book for a second. This was the skirt that I'm looking at, which is this one here. And when I counted the squares, there was 18 across here. This is the front panel. It's cut on the fold, which means there's 36 in total. And then this back piece was 36 and it says cut two. So I feel like what this skirt is, is actually just three big rectangles, the width of their fabric. My fabric that I'm using is not 36 inches. It is 44 and a half, but I had to even up this edge. So I chopped off a little bit extra and gathered it down to see what it would look like. And I think because it's quite a thin flimsy fabric, that having that extra width is not gonna be an issue. I can give it a bigger seam allowance if I need to. And also then the edges are selvage so I don't need to finish those, which is great. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and cut three rectangles and just sew them together. to gather this down to fit my bodice. The front bodice is also gathered just that little bit where the darts were in the original vest pattern. And I've made it so most of the gathers are in this center front section and they lessen as you get to the side because that's where we want most of the volume in that center front. So one of these panels is getting pleated down to the front of the bodice and the other two all into the back. So let's hope no threads break and we can gather this down. There is so much gather in the back. This is basically a cartridge pleated skirt at this point, but that's okay. We love, we love a lot of volume in our dresses. Now all that's left to do on this dress is the closure in the side and the hem. For the closure for this, because it's probably not a piece that I'm gonna wear very often, I don't really care about it being historically accurate, I'm going to go with a trusty ye old zipper. <laughs> is in and 
then working, which is always a bonus. Uh, now the very last thing I need to do is this hem. I did try it on and check where I needed the hemline to sit, so that's why the safety pins are there. Now I need to go in and just even it out, and then we can sew it. So close to being done! The only other thing I might do is make a sash just to sit on top of this, and that might literally just be a bit of ribbon. I think it just needs something there. thing I'm okay with that <laughs> but I think it's something to do with the puffy sleeves and the very full skirt I feel very bopey fish I'm glad I decided to add this blue sash I think it just finishes it off nicely Could probably sit a little higher in the back it's but it's fine and just sort of holds the dress in at that under bust area Whereas without it, it just looks a little unfinished. Let me know what you guys think of my first foray into Regency clothing. I think it turned out Regency-ish. Um, it's still not my favourite era, but I had fun making this and I like the stays. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.